This week on 4 Wheel Drive TV, we feature the tough, high country rigs of the Victorian Hound Hunters Association. We finish off our Cape York trip, highlight the action from the Superior Engineering Farm Fantastic event, and take a look at keeping your fuel tanks clean, quality diesel power chips, and the latest in bling 4x4 rims. I'm Simon Christie. All that and plenty more, let's get into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I'm Mark Hesse, the president of Victorian Hound Hunters. We breed hounds and train hounds to hunt samba deer in the high country of Victoria. Been at it for nearly 100 years. Historically, we had English fox hounds for that purpose. Now we've gone to a beagle, a bloodhound, and a harrier. Here in the hills of the Tullock Ranges, hunters come along with their hounds and they require them to be assessed. Each hound carries a microchip and we assess the hound as to the correct breed standards and the correct character of the hound. Those that get a tick have that microchip recorded with the Department of Primary Industries on a database. So those hounds are then legal for the purposes of hunting samba deer. Samba deer were introduced in 1860 in Victoria at Jembrook. They were bought here for the purpose of hunting. From that initial release they now find themselves west of the Gold Coast, made their way all the way up the divide. It's one of the most rapidly growing sports in popularity. It's incredible. Every year we get more hounds. There's approximately 5,500 hounds registered in Victoria for the purpose of hunting deer. There's some 25,000 game licenses issued for that purpose as well. So it's ever on the increase and year after year we see an increase here at Tullerwood which is good for the club. Today's a family day, you'll see jumping castles there, you'll see a heap of kids, we've had an Easter egg hunt. It's a golden opportunity for hunters to bring their hounds along and have them assessed. We've got officials here from the DPI, they've been running the actual hound test. To go hunting you've got to pass a test and that endorsement appears on your game licence. Also today there's stalls here, we have various four wheel drive products and outdoor goods, knives, camping gear. They're terrific people, they've all donated prizes for our raffle, raised a fair bit of money that way, and people have walked away with some great prizes. We had a special treat for hound people. Patrick O'Shea from the Findon Hunt Club, he came here today and gave a demonstration with his fox hunting hounds. He controls them with certain blurts on the bugle. We really appreciate that. Hound hunting on Samba Deer is permitted east of the Hume Highway and north of the Princess Highway at Gippsland. So in other words, it takes place in the Alps, it takes place in the mountains and it's just classic four-wheel drive country. Because of that, all the hound trucks, they're well decked out, they've got their winches, they've got the suitable tyres, the boys carry chains and all the recovery gear. You'd be pretty hard up to be stuck somewhere and not have a hound crew come to your rescue or clear a track or winch you out of a bog. They can recover themselves. They're not a burden on anyone else. They're not sitting there as a liability to other bush users. Hound hunters breed their own hounds. They're not pig dogs. They're not picked up the pound or anything like that. They're specifically bred scent trailing hounds. Now, the effort and the passion that goes into that is just incredible. There's blokes here that spend every waking moment thinking of how they can improve their pack, how they can breed a better dog, and once they've got them and they're quality hounds and they're getting deer off them, the cream rises to the top and they've got that quality, they preserve it and they hang on to it. They cooperate with other crews who have done the same. They swap bloodlines and pups and services. But the actual breeding of the hounds is such a passion. It's well above and beyond the actual shooting of the deer. If something happens to them or they go missing, they've got tracking collars on for locating them and they will not go home without them. They'll wait all hours to get those hounds back. 
very happy with how today's panned out. We've had close to a thousand people come here. We've put through just short of a hundred hounds. It's been a great day, it really has. Everyone's had a good time. They thoroughly enjoyed the demonstration of the Hunt Club hounds. We'll be on again March next year and for a long time to come and we look forward to next year. Well seriously, how good does this vehicle look? A fully kitted out dual cab Hilux with Australia's leading 4x4 accessories. Thanks to ultimate four wheel drive equipment from Perth, Canningvale, you can win this vehicle. It's worth almost $100,000. This is real guys, this vehicle worth almost $100,000 will be given away later this year. In fact, they've asked me to pick the winning prize at the Perth four wheel drive and adventure show in November. Stay tuned for more information. No trip to Cape York Peninsula is complete without going to the tip itself, the northernmost point of the Australian mainland. The final section of track out to the tip is a very pleasant drive through dense rainforest. The group parked on Frangipani Beach and set off for the final walk to the tip. One, two, three! Yay! Peter now led the convoy to a remote area on the west coast where they could be Robinson Crusoe's for a couple of days. But first of all, they had to get there. Good morning. There they are. Bit to your right. That's it. Now come straight and just kiss that side. Deb decided to give it a go. Pete's guidance giving her confidence. That's it. Here she comes, left. That's it, beautiful. Stay, stay like that. Keep it coming. That'll do, that'll do. Right, a hard right hand down. Right hand down, right hand down, that's it, that's it. Right hand down, that's it. There you go, well done. Once over the bridge, it was back into rainforest before hitting the beach. Camp was set up beside a river mouth. The next morning, some of the group took the opportunity to take a run up the beach. Peter told them about the wreck of a light ship, and they thought they would check it out. The light ship had been quietly rusting away on the beach since it was blown from its moorings in the Gulf of Carpentaria more than 30 years ago. Recent severe storms have destroyed much of what remained and the light tower is now buried in the sand. Meanwhile back at camp, fish was being prepared in a variety of styles, from baking in foil to poaching in a camp oven and deep frying in batter. It was a fitting way to end a great day on the Cape, another day in paradise. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three ton towing and the awesome 470 Newton meter Duramax diesel engine. Plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control. All for the hardcore adventurer. The all new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. 
Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. Total recovery and extraction device, TREAD. Whether it's sand, mud, snow, rocks or any tough terrain, TREAD is the ultimate all-in-one recovery device. Designed and manufactured in Australia for rugged performance, TREAD will let you explore with confidence. Available in a variety of colours and two easy to use sizes, TREAD is the true Aussie traction board you've been waiting for. For more information, visit meanmother.com.au. I'm Scott from DP Chip. The chip market has changed quite a bit in the last 12 months or a few years. A lot more diverse products coming on the market. A lot of those are just imported product, a lot of cheaper products. It's important to really look into the product and make sure you educate yourself, make an informed decision about what you're buying. I'd say every couple of weeks we get a product sent to us, to our workshop that's not our product. People are desperate for some help, sending these other products in, asking if we can help them with it. It's important if you're looking at a chip to make sure you get one with a good warranty, good product support. Check that you're getting what you pay for. You. Quality really is there. If you look for it, people who are buying these inferior chips, cheaper ones that are coming onto the market, just can't get in contact with the company they've bought it from. They can't get any product support or service. So every couple of weeks we're receiving chips at our workshop and people desperate for some help with them. Unfortunately, we can't help them with a product that's not ours. But it's really important to make an informed decision and get a product that's going to do the right thing by your vehicle. No point spending all that money on an expensive vehicle, getting the very best suspension, the very best ARB equipment and bull bars and whatever, and then skimping on something as important as your engine. So make sure you're getting a quality product, one with good backup and support, one with good warranties. We're also seeing a lot of chips that are just rebadged. People are just selling them. Who knows what they were doing last week, what they were selling then. It's important to look for a company that's got at least some diesel heritage behind it, some diesel background, so they can help you, even if it's not a problem with the product itself. If you've got a diesel vehicle, you want someone who knows what they're talking about and knows diesels. Make sure you're informed. Make sure you look at the company that's behind the product, one that can at least help you out with your vehicle if you've got a problem. A good quality chip will have a minimum of a 60-day money-back guarantee, six-year product warranty, and they should have a new vehicle engine and driveline warranty if they're confident that their settings are safe for your vehicle and that they're happy to stand by their product. And a good product will be backed by an Australian company that's been working on diesels for at least 30 years. So make sure you're getting a product that's got all those things, ticks all the boxes, make an informed decision about your product and get something that's not going to cause you any grief in the future. I'm Scott from DP Chip. Make sure you're not shopping on price alone. Make sure you're looking a bit deeper into the product that you're buying. Welcome to this year's coverage of the Superior Engineering Farm Fantastic 4x4 Motorsport event. Held just north of Brisbane at this popular field day and agricultural show, this event highlights the expertise and range of Superior Engineering's support of the broader 4x4 community with a diverse range of tracks, obstacles and challenges attracting a just as varied field of eager Queensland competitors and participants. With everything from low-speed extreme rock crawling right through to high-speed off-road racing, this Superior Engineering event was a dirty but successful challenge and a great display. Let's check out some of the highlights.
Thanks to the team from Superior Engineering for this great Queensland event and the footage. And watch out for more Superior events from the Superior Engineering crew. Next up, let's check out the latest in modern and classic alloy 4x4 rims. Hi, I'm Brendan from 4x4 Wheelco. Today at the 4 Drive Show, I'd just like to run through some of the unique finishes we do in our range. We've got the PVD Chrome. It's a new chrome on the market. It actually gives a three-year warranty for pitting and peeling. The two ranges we do in that is the American Racing and the ATX range. There's four styles that we do. The second unique finish we've got is the Teflon. It's a household name. We all use Teflon pots and pans in our household. ATX is the only brand that we do the Teflon on. It's endorsed by DuPont in America. It was uh, two and a half years of testing before they actually released the coating onto the wheels to make sure it would be successful. Less surface resistant, mud, brake dust, dirt and grime slides off nice and easy. So it's a nice slippery surface, so easy to keep clean and makes your car keep looking good all the time. Simon from 4 Wheel Drive TV has just fitted the ledge wheel onto his Nissan Patrol. He's currently testing them for us at the moment. Very happy with the progress with them at the moment. So you will see some more feedback on that. And as we mentioned, newer brand addition to our range is the American Racing. American Racing's been around since 1956. A few new styles on the market now, so all unique vehicles as in your VW Amarok, BT50, Ford Ranger. We have styles and fitments to suit. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. Do you need more from your four-wheel drive suspension? Designed for Aussie conditions, Superior Engineering has a suspension solution to suit any four-wheel drive. Mix and match from the widest range of specialty suspension components or opt for the latest in spring and dampening technologies. Throw in the widest range of 4x4 suspension accessories and Superior Engineering is your complete 4x4 and suspension specialist. Superior Engineering, it's engineered to be superior. For more information, visit superiorengineering.com.au. Warning, water in fuel is one of the biggest killers of diesel engines. But there is now a unique alarm system available that lets you know when there are dangerous water levels in your fuel system. Water Watch is a simple and effective fuel alarm that offers LED and audible warning signals. Easily fitted, Water Watch is inexpensive insurance for your vehicle. Avoid huge repair costs, ensure your motor runs clean and be warned of any water issues with the innovative Water Watch. For more information, visit waterinddiesel.com.au. Hey, I'm Nick, and this is my 105 Land Cruiser. She was a petrol, I've turned it into a diesel, doing the convert myself. I put the snorkel on, gauges, all that sort of stuff. Really want to put some lockers in it next, but that probably won't happen before I head up to the Cape next year. Places I like to drive would be Anglesey, Hotways, go camping up there, love it, take the family, it's all good fun. Future mods will be definitely the lockers, front and rear. Other than that, she's all good. I've got the drawers in the back, fridge slider, everything. To enter the Your Rig competition, simply send an email to me, Simon at 4 TV. And each weekly winner takes home an Electric Blue Spanset Recovery Strap, a diesel fuel conditioner and additive from Responsive Engineering, 
an upper cylinder lubricant, stubby holder and hyper lubricant from Motor Coat. A copy of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a copy of Dirt Comp magazine and two copies of Blitz magazine. A solar pod buddy, thanks to our friends at Roller Solar. A $100 gift voucher from Ozpig. A stubby holder from Allsat Phones. An AnySharp knife sharpener from Kiesler. A hat and stubby holder, thanks to our friends at Superior Engineering. A HEMA Great Desert Tracks Atlas. A Donaldson Diesel Fuel Filtration Kit. A 360 gearbox emergency oil pack. A bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. A ration of Sanitarium Up and Go. A Carry Boy hat. A stubby of Bundaberg Ginger Beer. A U-Fixit windscreen repair kit. An emergency ration of Ocean Delight Tuna. A comprehensive recovery kit, courtesy of General Motors Holden. A prize pack from ARB, including a drink bottle, travel mug, stubby holder and 4B key ring. And it's all securely wrapped up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Thank you Simon and Miranda. Love watching the show. Thanks to the sponsors for all the prizes. Yeah, love it. Hi, I'm Glenn from Ultimate Full Drive. This is the Ultimate Tourer, and we are giving this vehicle away. This fully kitted out Toyota Hilux is worth almost $100,000. So if you want to enter, you've got to be serious. For more information on how you can win this vehicle, visit the Full Drive TV website. Hi, I'm Dave from Responsive Engineering and I'd like to talk to you about tank breathers on common rail vehicles. The fuel tank breathers are there to allow air into the fuel tank when fuel is drawn out. With the flow rates that common rail operate at, we find that this little breather pipe can become a negative pressure at all times. With this being the case, then of course we can draw dust into the fuel tank. The common rail being so intolerant, uh, particulates and debris becomes a big issue. Also, if the fuel tank is hot, Common Rail operates quite a high temperature of fuel. We go into a river crossing. Sometimes these breathers sit on top of the tank, lay in the wells on the top of the tank. Easily water can be drawn into the fuel tank. So a good antidote for this is to extend tank breathers up into the engine bay in a less likely area to draw in dirt or water as we would with our diff breathers. We do it with diff breathers. Quite often we overlook doing it with the fuel tank. But for the same reasons you'd do it with a differential breather, you do it with the fuel tank. I'm Dave from Responsive Engineering. Keep your diesels clean. Hi, I'm Bruce from Donaldson Filtration. Just remember, each week on Four Wheel Drive TV, we're giving away one of these diesel fuel filter kits as part of the Your Rig competition. Just watch the Your Rig segment on the show each week for more details. Hi, I'm Tony from Donaldson Filtration. Over the last few months, you've seen us install and give away a number of our diesel fuel filter kits. These add-on fuel filter kits work in conjunction with your existing fuel filters, but provide far superior performance and protection. They're 99% efficient at removing particulates from your fuel. These fuel filter kits are available to suit most makes and models, but the big news is we now have a super heavy duty kit to suit high performance motors, bigger four wheel drives, trucks, and vehicles with higher fuel flow requirements. These larger units can still be used on smaller vehicles, and with a three micron rating at 99% efficiency, they provide even more protection for your vehicle. The kit comes complete with a filter head, two filters, one as a spare, a drain bowl, and two fittings for easy installation. So where space is limited, you could use the smaller kit, but where you've got a larger vehicle or you've got a little bit more room, then the larger kit would be the choice. The price difference between these two kits is minimal, so just choose the one that best suits your vehicle. I'm Tony from Donaldson Filtration, and remember, modern diesels need more protection now than ever before. Hi, I'm Peter Thorpe, and this is Graham McPherson, my navigator and we're from the Plumworks Reedy 4x4 team. We're out here this weekend at Heathcote racing our new GU Patrol that we've just been building for the last year and a half. It has a LS1 King Shocks 
We run a giggle pin twin motored winch on the front, which I haven't had before and found really, really good this weekend. We also have a rear mount radiator on the car, which seems to work really well. We run 37 inch mud terrains with Walker Evans rims. We find the pro comps get rid of the mud very easily out of the, out of the holes. The winch event this weekend out here at Heathcote has been some really good stages. Very technical driving, have to think a lot, which is good for us at the moment because in Victoria we do not have a lot of racing going on. We're hoping to do a lot more racing this year, maybe an outback heading to WA in September to race the Ironman. This weekend's been a bit of a shakedown for us with the car, just to see what you know is wrong and right with it, whether we want to change a few things or not. We've had a really good weekend this weekend, driving, and we hope to be back next year if Clint puts on another event. There hasn't been a big scene this year in four-wheel drive, but there's a lot of drivers that are wanting to get out there and have a go. I think it's a place to let off a bit of steam and also, you know, we're not wrecking the bush. If we're out here having a race, Clint's also one of the ones that sort of, you know, tried to put something together for everybody to have an event. So if you've got a car, get here and, and be in it to win it. Next week on 4 Drive TV, we look at Outback trip preparation, damaged diesel pumps, the 40 finally gets a blast, plus we feature highlights of the second Rumble on the Rocks. I'm Simon Christie, tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard, I'll see you next week.